so my name is Tuukka Lehtiniemi. I come from Finland where I work at the Aalto University in Helsinki. Um, and I'm going to talk about some ideas that are out there that basically say that the digital economy is not fair at the moment, uh, that we are not getting enough for what we give away, uh, and, and about some ideas about how to go, go on and change that situation. But just to put you in the mood, uh, have you considered this question, kind of what, what do you get for your data? Do you, do you have some ideas? I can also provide some answers, but do you have some? Have you thought about it? Depending on the service, the access to the platform. Sure, yeah, that's a good one. We get a service that is purposefully designed to get as much data, but not exactly the very service that we might want. Great. <laughs> a really considered answer. Uh, so, uh, so we do get free services for free data, kind of. Uh, we get personalized services and, and, and we get those kinds of services that you mentioned. Uh, but we also do get better services in general. And, and we do kind of uh, you just think of all the services that you use today uh, that have in a short time changed the way we uh, kind of as a society are. So we do get that as well. We do get lots of good things. Uh, something that's pretty concrete that you get uh, now, if you go to the uh, was it Washington Post, yeah, Washington Post website, you get this. Uh, so there's the free service for free data. You can read a few uh, articles, articles per month. But the, these two are more interesting, I think. It says that if you pay $60 a year, uh, they will collect your uh, all kinds of data, track, track your use in the service and outside it as well, and then give you advertisements. And with $90 a year, you get all the content without the tracking and without the advertisements. So with data, you would, could argue you get a $30 discount. So that's kind of a valuable thing, I guess. Uh, now, uh, how things kind of are and or stand in the digital economy has given rise to all kinds of, of, of activism, such as this. French group who are proposing uh, open source alternatives for large online platforms. Uh, in this presentation, I will talk about one way to approach this, which is the economic fairness, as I mentioned. So what does this uh, mean? It means um, economic fairness mean. It means things like, uh, do we have an equal possibility to participate in the data economy? Uh, can we access the means to participate? And are the benefits that are gained from data kind of fairly distributed among uh, those who are interested in them? Um, and there's kind of two ways to you can look at these issues of fairness. You can look at the individuals and say that uh, they do not get enough for what they give up. Or you can look at the issue as, uh, on a kind of a business or societal level and say that uh, data is an important resource and it's been monopolized by a few large actors. And that's not fair either. Uh, so how to respond to these questions? Uh, one way you can respond to this is to say that uh, if the benefits are not fairly distributed, it, it, we can prevent the data collection, and let's not let's not have that at all. So you can use DuckDuckGo instead of Google. You can delete your Facebook account. Uh, you can use all sorts of ad blockers, which are, have been called the largest consumer boycott in the history. And you can try to completely hide your digital trails, like using the Tor browser. But, of course, you are also missing out the good things, the, the services that you get when you do this, like delete Facebook, then you don't use Facebook anymore. Uh, kind of, um, even though there's, that data might be used in, harm, in, in some harmful ways, it's at the same time it's not used enough. So we are kind of missing out because it not, it's not used enough because it's monopolized by, by some companies. There's a proposition called My Data. Uh, or called a number of names, but for example, my data, which seems to be the kind of the converging term at the moment. So the idea is, is for, for this system to be fair, let everyone decide for themselves where their data is used and how it is transferred between firms. And then, then kind of essentially you let the markets do the work after that. So, uh, so if I can say where my data should be used, uh, data collected by some, some specific uh, firm, for example, so it should be used by that other firm as well. So let, then the market will provide me all kinds of nice services. 
This, all, of course, involves uh, technology development, and there are various small examples of this. And, and one, one type of example that there is is our called personal data spaces. And the idea here is that um, you have a kind of a private server or a data account into which you accumulate all your data from different places using the GDPR, for example, and, and some data portability rights that you have there. And then you can decide what data to share and to whom and, and kind of uh, form your own terms and conditions on the data use. Uh, and, and then you get to be an intermediary between different kinds of service providers. Uh, for example, the use, if you looked at the previous presentation here, uh, there was the idea of, um, uh, of uh, or the example of the smart home. So, for example, in the smart home case, you would uh, be able to redirect the data you have from the smart home providers uh, and, and use that, for example, redirect it to an uh, electricity company uh, for uh, some billing purposes or something like that. So, kind of um, something that doesn't happen at the moment anyway. But there's kind of, um, you would say that there's kind of main drawback in this idea is that they kind of place the burden on the individual. And, and one, what, what I mean by this and why it's, a good, it's, it's not such a good thing necessarily, it comes from the Camp Cambridge Analytica case. I bet everyone has heard something about that. Uh, so there's a kind of a small nuance there. Uh, was that some, uh, some of the data that Cambridge Analytica was using was collected by a researcher at the Cambridge University by a Facebook app uh, that, and, and an associated questionnaire or a survey. And the app collected the Facebook data and the survey data. And the user who participated in that got some, like, something like a few dollars for doing that. So you get kind of answer a few questions, give your Facebook data and get some money for that. So uh, all good, right? But now we are discussing how this, or did these individual data decisions have an effect on the US presidential election, something that you couldn't really uh, con be considering when you were doing that decision. So who could foresee something like that? Uh, in summary, you could say that it's really difficult to uh, make decisions on your data, uh, or, or do it in the right way. And, and these privacy decisions may be collectively really harmful as well. Of course, one way to move forward here is to say that these personal data spaces would be new kinds of services that give you uh, kind of more uh, information, more knowledge, develop better services to make that, those kinds of decisions. And, and undoubtedly, lots can be done here. Uh, but however, I think we should also kind of reframe the question a bit, this who gets to benefit from data. And, and where we could use these kinds of services is to increase the bargaining power we all have, or, or currently don't have, but could have, against the big platform providers. Kind of leverage dependence of these uh, platforms from us as their data sources. So let's say uh, the personal data space would be a bargaining agent, like think like uh, labor unions who bargain on behalf of all the laborers against the, uh, um, against the uh, employers and coordinate kind of the actions of the laborers. So in a similar way here, or think of uh, coordinated boycotts or think of carrot mobs, if you know what that is, kind of an opposite of a boycott. So uh, di redirect users to certain kinds of uses that are thought to be beneficial, certain kinds of services. Um, a second step here a bit further, it would be to talk about, not talk about bargaining, but of governance. Uh, in a sense, you could sell, use the personal data space that I gave you an example of uh, to kind of set rules that limit the kind of data use we, we as the users of the service, find uh, acceptable or unacceptable and, 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 and promote the kinds that we find acceptable. So it would be not my personal terms and conditions, uh, but uh, our terms and conditions as a collective thing. We could, for example, say that certain uses of data are off limits. Uh, and, but some kind of uses could be, could be okay. And one th way to think about what this could mean is given by uh, the philosopher Luciano Floridi, who gives an example of, of the kind of my body and how it's in, in most situations uh, not okay. It's unacceptable to trade some parts of my body, but somebody, some, some pieces of my body can be traded, like the hair, but like internal organs, or, or organs no. 
so should we think some information in a similar way? Uh, then the third and final thing is to use these personal data space services as, as uh, aggregating personal data for data commons. So uh, data that is currently at the hands of the firms only, it could be aggregated as a common like pull the data and then certain kinds of service providers could access that, like public, public interest companies or, or researchers or whatever, or, or businesses, if, if that's what we agree on. And then those data could be used for the benefit of the common good of the people and not for the benefit of the individuals as such. Uh, there are some examples of this, like for example in, in the smart city domain, there's the idea that there's the smart smart city data commons for the benefit of the citizens or in the case of health data uh, some patients groups have been pooling their data in this way so instead of uh, thinking about my data for my benefit you could kind of uh, think of it as a collective benefit as a design target for these services uh, so my question in the beginning was a kind of a perhaps a bit leading one I think we could look at it uh, in a different way to move forward, like reframe it a bit. Instead of asking, how can I benefit from my data, we could ask, how can we benefit from our data? Uh, and, and think of the economic fairness question uh, in terms of the collective rather than the individual. And thank you.